surgery at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to present this morning uh, some of the data related to the primary endpoint results from the ACOSOG Z1071 study, which was a study evaluating the role of sentinel lymph node surgery in patients presenting with node positive breast cancer who are treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So as a background to the design of this study, currently the standard of care for those patients who are known to be node positive at the time that they present with breast cancer and who receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy is for them to undergo a complete axillary lymph node dissection at the time of their definitive breast surgery. And the ACOSOG Z1071 study was designed to address whether sentinel lymph node surgery is an accurate staging method for these patients after completion of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. The primary endpoint was to look at the false negative rate of the procedure of sentinel lymph node surgery in those patients that were node positive at the time of their initial presentation, <coughs> completed neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and underwent a sentinel lymph node surgery with resection of at least two sentinel lymph nodes. This was a phase two study where all patients with node positive disease that was confirmed histologically and were treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy underwent both a planned sentinel lymph node surgery and a backup axillary lymph node dissection. Patients who were diagnosed, let's see if we can get this to work. Patients um, who were diagnosed with their breast cancer at the time of presentation underwent either a fine needle aspiration or, an, or a core needle biopsy of some suspicious appearing lymph nodes in their ipsilateral axilla. If these were documented on histology or cytology to be node positive, patients were eligible to enter the trial. They were treated with systemic chemotherapy at the discretion of the medical oncologist, and then after completion of chemotherapy, at the time of their definitive breast surgery, underwent sentinel lymph node surgery, which was recommended to be performed with both blue dye and radio-labeled colloid. The sentinel nodes were removed and submitted for pathological analysis, and thereafter the patients at the same surgery underwent an axillary lymph node dissection to evaluate the remaining lymph nodes in the axilla. The sentinel lymph node identification rate in this study was 92.7%, which means we identified a sentinel lymph node successfully in 639 of the 689 patients. And this was not different between those patients with clinical N1 and clinical N2 disease. When we look at the 637 patients with node positive breast cancer that underwent sentinel lymph node surgery and axial lymph node dissection, they all received neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And after chemotherapy at the time of surgery, 255 patients, or 40%, were found to be node negative. These patients, therefore, are unlikely to derive any benefit from undergoing an axial lymph node dissection. And this is the group of patients we would like to look to minimize the extent of axillary surgery in. Those patients that had residual nodal involvement at surgery, which constitutes 60% of the patients, are the group that we use to look for the false negative rate. But if we look at the total cohort of 637 patients in this study, the sentinel lymph node surgical procedure was able to accurately identify the nodal status after chemotherapy in 91.2% of all women. The false negative rate is calculated by looking at those patients that had a negative sentinel lymph node but did have axillary disease in their axillary lymph node dissection. And the denominator is all those patients with any nodal disease at surgery. The false negative rate of this study was 12.6%, and that's out of the patients with clinical N1 disease and at least two sentinel nodes examined. This false negative rate is slightly higher than our predefined endpoint for this study. However, when we look at variables that impacted the false negative rate, it was very clear to see that those patients that underwent their sentinel lymph node mapping with the use of both blue dye and radio-labeled colloid as, been ad as had been recommended by the protocol had a statistically significant lower false negative rate of 10.8%. And also, when we look at the evaluation of the axilla, the more sentinel lymph nodes removed, the lower the false negative rate. And when three or more sentinel lymph nodes were resected, the false negative rate was 9.1%, and this was statistically significant. There are some important caveats to understand. Those patients where only one sentinel lymph node was removed were excluded from this primary analysis. And in this subgroup of patients, the false negative rate was 31.5%, which is clearly high and clinically unacceptable. We specifically in the study looked at those patients that had histological changes. That means that when we looked at the sentinel lymph node under the microscope pathologically, if we saw evidence of therapy effect, fibrosis, the fact that chemotherapy had had an effect on the node, 
we saw a slightly lower false negative rate in that group at 10.8%. Similarly, some of our patients had had a clip placed in their lymph node at the time of their initial diagnosis with breast cancer that involved the lymph nodes. In this subgroup of 172 patients, when the clip was actually identified to be in the sentinel node at the time of surgery, the false negative rate again was lower at 7.4%. Clinically, N2 disease was excluded from the initial analysis. However, in these 34 patients with clinical N2 disease, there were no false negative events. And so when we lump together the clinical N1 and clinical N2 patients, which gives us a slightly larger cohort of patients to evaluate, the false negative rate in those with two or more sentinel nodes resected drops down to 12.0%. And when we once again look at the group that followed the protocol with a recommendation for dual tracer, the false negative rate was 10.3% which is much more clinically acceptable. So in summary, the ACOSOG Z1071 study demonstrated that sentinel lymph node surgery can correctly identify the nodal status of the axilla in women who are node positive at presentation and have undergone therapy with neoadjuvant chemotherapy in 91.2% of women. 40% of women had complete eradication of disease from the axilla, and this subgroup of women are unlikely to benefit from axillary lymph node dissection and more extensive axillary surgery. The false negative rate in clinical N1 patients with two or more sentinel nodes examined was 12.6%, but this was statistically lower when dual tracer was used at 10.8%, or when more than two sentinel nodes were examined, the false negative rate dropped to 9.1%. So in conclusion, sentinel lymph node surgery is a useful tool for detecting residual nodal disease in those women who present with node-positive breast cancer receiving neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Surgical technique is very important to minimize the false negative rate with recommendations for the use of dual tracer and a minimum of two sentinel nodes resected. We've also identified some potential further refinements with uh, potential to further improve the technique with the use of a clip that's placed in the lymph node at the time of diagnosis and also collaboration with our pathologist in terms of review of the sentinel nodes to demonstrate therapy effect. Using sentinel lymph node surgery in this patient population will enable us to reduce the extent of axillary surgery and therefore decrease morbidities for our women treated for breast cancer. Thank you. <laughs>